Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Young. I'm with the Proven Practice team with my expertise in the financial performance management area. And over the last several months, I've been doing a lot of work on interoperability areas, especially with their, our products are trying to be more and more working together, especially with TM1 being the focal point and Cognos Disclosure Management, which is basically an application where we can start building objects within there to generate specific reports as part of your soft close or your regulatory filings. The reason why this, this session I decided to do one, because there's some, been some confusions around working with OLAP sources within CDM, especially when we're starting to deal with uh, Cognos Controller, which is another option uh, a product that is sold in terms of the consolidation solutions. Because of that, we want to make sure that th there's a proper flow to understand how the data resides and how you kind of have to work with data sets. Now, your user guides provide excellent information in terms of the setup in terms of different aspects. And what I mean by that, they, they provide great things to do the database connection. However, they don't really go in a lot of detail around defining the OLAP sources. Because of that, I wanted to do a, a particular slide with focusing on the structure of data, how it's moving from one system to another system as part of this overall bringing data in as part of the financial closed consolidation reporting cycle. So the emphasis on this presentation will be walking you through the, the data points from controller to TM1 to CDM to kind of understand the flow, plus I'll also stress how you can go back and look for different things as part of the data validation process. Now this is only one option available to you to work with Cognos controller data. The other option which isn't as a robust refresh is you can use the Excel add-in link to take the reports and build them within them, but that's not as robust in terms of a refresh. And this is the reason why I'm going to stress more the, the financial analytical, analytical publisher. Now, that really comes into play where you've got a customer that has got FAP installed and working. Now, this is another option based on the TM1 data connection to use this as a, a, a particular data connection to bring data in. So the very first slide you're seeing here is you're seeing a flow. So you're seeing the data from the ERP system moving into Cognos Controller Relational Database, trickle into TM1. When we talk trickle, basically, if we make any changes in Cognos Controller, we're basically flowing that through. So that any change in a journal entry, any change in uh, a form entry, input form, will also be pushed through as part of the trickle published to update the TM1 cube. Now the TM1 cube is very critical here because this is the one that we're going to connect to as part of our OLAP sources. But I wanted to show you this is because controller is just like any other data depository. It's going to push data out. But you still need to be familiar with the data sets within controller because the way controller works, it stores information in forms and it also looks at things at a consolidated level. We're not particularly going to a company level. We're going, I want to have a final closed trial balance as part of my whole cycle and that's basically what I'm going to emphasize here. The next slide here is just basically giving you some examples of what happens when you initially set up the the uh, trickle publish in the whole FAP publisher. Basically a series of tables are created what we call as near real-time reporting that tie right into basically the controller database to update. It's these tables are part of the star schema that we're actually working with with inside TM1 to basically report that trickle publish. So we're creating a step to move data from controller to TM1 and then to um, through this FAP process to eventually into CDM. The next slide basically is going to walk you through the publisher here. And the reason why you want to be very careful this, like I've emphasized with other TM1 stuff, is you need to make sure that your 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 the publisher is working. So it's it's started. You need to also look at a couple other aspects too. You want to make sure that you're mapped to the correct data sources security settings. You may want to look at the audit log to see if there's any issues with it, that you've had any errors, messages, and stuff like that. Uh, data Mart, we're going to define too which Data Mart we're going to actually work with. So we're working at all these possible setups. And that's what the financial analytical publisher is. It's a setup. You're setting up the connection to communicate between co controller and TM1. The second piece of this puzzle is actually TM1 itself. So TM1 will actually create the dimensions particularly to coincide basically with how core, um, controller stores data. So 
I'm not going to emphasize a lot on basically those particular slides in terms of controller data. I'll come to that slide a little later on when we start looking at basically defining the, the data sources for more particularly how we want the information viewed. Now, this particular slide here that you're looking at is no different from your user documentation. It basically shows you how you're basically going to set up a connection. Now, all you're really doing at this stage of the game is basically authenticating your, your security access and connecting to a server. In this particular case, we're connecting to the FAP server where we're going to basically pull what cubes we want in. We're not getting into define those cubes yet. We're basically just defining to that server. So we're defining where that server resides and how we're going to connect to it in ter terms of the authentication. And then we're also talking about refresh policies when we get an ex expiration policies, when we want updates to happen, how frequent and all that. When we set that, that's what part of your defining here in terms of the refresh. The next slide now is now getting into to actually the nitty gritty of basically adding a data source. Now we're basically working with data sets here. Now particular what I want you to focus here, if you look at the left hand side you have page options. These are all the dimensions that you're basically looking at. In the way controller is we have closing entries, we have contribution entries. We also have month and actuality, right? So what you want to do is make sure that when you're pulling things in that you're pulling in things appropriately, that it's the actual or the budget that you want in that you make sure you define it properly. Okay. Now here's what you're seeing now in the columns. This is where we're defining the periods and monthly. Now on a balance sheet, it's going to be as at a this particular date. It's not a big deal. When you start dealing with the income statement or stuff that you're looking at monthly, you'll also see where you have the ability to bring in year to date amount, and you also have the ability to, to, to work backwards to calculate monthly amounts as well. So it's going to be depending on how you define your reports and how you want to build them is basically how you might pull information together in. And that's basically what controller will do. It will calculate the differences for the monthly amounts. So you need to be cognizant of that. The roles now is the accounts. Why is the accounts so important in the role? Because that's tying back to basically building a financial statement, whether it's a balance sheet, income statement, profit and loss is the same as an income statement, cash flow, or any sort of reporting, segmental reporting that maybe you have to do. That's all part of defining that. The recommendation we always suggest to people when they're working with CDM is you may want to have a trial balance and bring in the trial balance and work with the trial balance. The reason I say that is because it should have all the accounts and you can work with it in terms of the balance sheet counts, the income statement accounts, and such and such. Next slide now is basically saying to you, Here's the period months. In the roles, you're seeing the balance sheet form, and you're seeing the count. So B300110 is a basically a goodwill count. You're seeing the, the period, and we're only looking at a total for the year, but because it's a balance sheet, it's as a date. You're seeing the amounts. You're seeing the amounts from one year to the next year. So you know that your results are pulling something. You can actually here look at this particular screen, go back to controller, and test it to make sure that what you're seeing here is exactly what's in the trial balance with drill down. So you can actually look at it that way. Next slide. Now we've walk, walked through the FAP publisher. We've walked through controller how it stores data. Now what I wanted to emphasize here with this particular slide is the process now. Basically now we've defined the OLAP source. We've assigned it to a report. Now what you're seeing in the left hand column there, you've checked the object out, you're starting to work with the object within CDM. Now you're starting to build the report in terms of using the functionality of CDM as well as the Excel functionalities of formulas and calculations, right? Now basically what's happening in the middle slide, you're actually seeing basically the actual amount pulled in as part of the data source. Well, that's the data source that you're actually going to work with to build within this, these reports. Now if you look at the goodwill line, you'll see the amount basically 107,388. Now, what I actually also pulled in with this report was basically the controller trial balance with drill down, so you can see that the balances are correct. So the reason why I want to emphasize this, if you're troubleshooting an issue why things don't agree, what you do is you back it up, back to the OLAP data source, the data sets that you've identified, make sure that number is tied back to what you're reporting in controller, make sure that the TM1 server is set up, go back into TM1, and you may find it worthwhile to have TM1 open as well to kind of look at the dimensionalities to build. One of the things I suggest and I found very helpful is having all the data sources open when you initially define it. Okay? 
The reason why I want to walk you through this, this allows you to kind of do some troubleshooting on the OLAP sources beyond basically just the connection. You want to make sure all the pieces together and understand how the flow works.